Welcome my, once again to the second lecture on E Sectional Program. And let me do a recap of what I have done in my first lecture. We have introduced uh, uh, the natural numbers n and then the solubility question of a plus x equal to b was uh, not completely resolved in this system. And then to resolve that uh, system for any, any a and b, we have introduced the concept of negative numbers. These are called minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, etc. are called negative numbers and 1, 2, 3, etc. are called positive numbers. Then we have seen that a division is not possible, which is equivalent to telling that the equation Ax equal to b in general cannot be solved in this system. In the process, we have introduced a, a new number system called the rational number system. We have introduced everything as a collection of objects. On that collection of objects, we introduce what we call it uh, some algebraic concepts, mainly addition and multiplication. And when we came to try to introduce the uh, division, we see that this space, the space Z is the set of integers is inadequate. And then we have defined the rational number system, what we call it Q. After introducing, and this we have some sort of a motivation to introduce symbolic thing. Even though this is abstract, this somewhat more uh, intuitive to your mind. But going beyond the rational number system, to introduce the real number system, it is much more delicate. It is not easy to comprehend even for a BSc student. It involves something more. To introduce division, we have introduced the fraction, what we call it a rational numbers. And that set of rational numbers are denoted by the symbol Q. And then next, our problem after solving linear equations of the form x plus a equal to b and a x equal to b, a, b these two are linear type equations. If you know linearity, it is well and good. Otherwise, treat it as a first order degree, first degree equations. After that, our next aim was to solve the quadratic equation. This is much more delicate. And what I have introduced is that I given an exercise here that x square equal to 2 if you consider. And if you want to find a rational number satisfying this equation, you can actually prove it as an exercise that does not exist any x equal to p by q with q not equal to 0 satisfying this equation. This requires a proof and that proof is not that difficult. That's why you leave it as an exercise. So the issue is that because of this exercise, this equation cannot be solved in general for q. In general, x square equal to a cannot be solved in q. That means that forces us to have a new system in which this equation could be solved. But developing R in terms of such symbols is not that easy. That is where we have stopped in the previous class. The real number system is much more complicated. It is not that easy to define the way Q and Z are defined. So I will not attempt to do anything here. What I just want to say is that the real number system, number system, there are various methods to develop and some of the methods are the method of dedicate and cut, method of dedicate and cut. And then there are other methods, method of using Cauchy sequences and some older method called decimal point, decimal approximations and so on. There are various methods. Each of these methods are very delicate and uh, it's not that easy and I will not even attempt to say anything about these methods. Okay. But what is interesting is that on the system R, now it is so you have a system N 
which contain the system Z, which contain the system Q. Up to this you have seen the algebra. After that, this is contained in R. And even introducing addition, multiplication, division, subtraction, everything is not that easy. It involves a tremendous amount of work and at some point of time, you will be able to read that material elsewhere. You may not see that in your course work, but you can see elsewhere. But what is interesting is that in the earlier, I have told you there are, you want to solve this system, but there are two cases, case 1 and case 2. And what we will solve uh, in this system, you can solve this quadratic equation x square equal to a with a positive. So this system can be solved here. This system in general cannot be solved uh, in this Q. And that's the point. And as I said once again repeating, it's a collection of some abstract objects uh, defined this way. But uh, I will come back to this equation x square equal to minus a soon and that is the purpose of this course to introduce that. So what I want to tell you here, some visualization of R, that is possible. Even though I cannot give a representation like Q, Z and N, I cannot have any representation, I can just say a symbol A. I cannot give a representation like P by Q, P Q or P minus Q here, all that there is no representations like this, but there is a typical visualization of R, visualization of R. This is possible because of an order structure in R. That's what I know. This is an important property of R. In important property of R, important property of R. Of course, R consists of all these properties also true here, but so we exploit that important property to visualize R. What is this property? This property is called the order in R. Order in R. Means, what do you mean by an order uh, which is denoted by a notation less than order. So, this is just a notation to define an order. What is interesting is that if you take two elements A and B, then there is a trichotomy. Trichotomy. What is the trichotomy? Only one of the three possibilities are possible and definitely one of them is true. One and only one is true, okay. One and only one is true. What is this trichotomy? Either A less than B or A equal to B or A greater than B. So you see this is an important trichotomy property leading to what is called a linear structure. This will tell you, imply some linear arrangement, linear structure or linear arrangement. Because of this linear arrangement, the visualization happens. You can take a line, you can take any arbitrary line and you can every x r is constructed as abstract objects. That is what you have to keep it in your mind. The points in R or the elements of R are some abstract objects. So every A in R, there exists a unique point. In the line, you can arrange that. 
For example, you have a zero, you can array, uh, associate corresponding to zero, you can arrange a point there. Corresponding to one, you can arrange a point here. Then, once you have these two points, you take any element in a, a in R. If then a trichotomy is true, trichotomy is true means suppose you take any element in R, so either a less than zero or a equal to zero or a greater than zero is satisfied. If a greater than zero, less than zero, you can mark it somewhere here. And if a greater than zero, you can mark it here. You take any element in R, you can mark. And you can have little more concepts which I don't want to tell you here because that is much more difficult to explain to you. You can exactly mark in some specific way. By marking such in a very specific way, every point in R can be associated a unique point here and every point here you can have a point here. So there is a one-to-one -one correspondence between the abstract points of R and abstract elements or objects in R with the points in this line. And this line is called the real line. So I want you to, uh, the students to understand one important thing. Quite often people think that real line is the real number system. Real number system is something, a collection of abstract objects together with its algebraic operation and a real line is a visualization of R. Why I say that there is a one-to-one -one correspondence that there, for, uh, that's not true in the context of rational numbers. For every rational number is a real number and hence there is a point here but every point here need not be associated with the Q. So there are points here on the line which are not associated with the Q and that are exactly the new elements and capturing that new elements is essentially the construction of the real number system. As I said, it is much more complicated. As you see that even though we are in use for again just like for ages and ages, the real numbers are used. All these methods are developed in the, just a hundred years back. A proper mathematical foundation of the real number system is given just hundred and odd years back. You can see that why such a foundation is necessary for mathematics. Okay. So that is what one So it's a, there is a real a realization that one. So that completes the known number system which essentially is not part of the course. So now let, let's go to the next solvability issue. The issue what? is that solvability of solvability of x square equal to a with a negative and a belongs to real number. In particular, x square equal to minus 1. How do you solve this situation? So, this solvability issue led to what we call it's a complex number system. And that's what we will be doing in the coming lectures. Complex number system. As in the beginning what I said, when I define a complex number system, it should come in such a way that the re it should embed the real number system. You are not going to define a completely new number system. You are enlarging this real number system and uh, you are getting a bigger system and the addition multiplication should carry forward. So the existing algebra should not be lost in the process of defining a new algebra in C. Okay. So before going to that, I want you to tell you which uh, pro, uh, maybe some of you know it. See, the complex number system was actually developed, initially developed uh, in the 19th century. Mainly due to Weistrass, Weistrass Cauchy, 
Dr. Riemann and probably many others. So these are the three big names in the development of complex number system. And this happened, Cauchy was probably in the early part of the 19th century, 1800 and something. And then Riemann in the second half of the 19th century and we as far as so maybe probably in the early part of the century. But what I was going to tell you something more interesting, the necessity of defining square root of negative numbers was observed much, much earlier. I am going to tell you an incident or a problem where they observed a necessity of defining square root of negative numbers as early as in the 15th and 16th century. Okay. This is what the method of what we call it, uh, called Cardano's, Cardano. This also in another name called Tartaglia, Tartaglia, uh, Tartaglia's or Cardano's method for cubic equation. So we all know, so it's a very interesting, it's a very method of uh, method of solving cubic equation. See, we are already only interested in solving the quadratic equation with a negative. But this observation of negative numbers, square root of negative numbers, and this happened sometime in uh, 15th and 16th century. Yeah, 15th, 16th century almost 300 years back, this observation. Okay. So, let me briefly, I would like require all the students to go through some material and understand this Cardano's method properly. I will quickly describe it here, but not too much details. What is a cubic equation? A cubic equation is something like this, ax square plus bx plus c equal to 0. This is what the people were trying to find the solutions of uh, cubic equation. Okay. Of course, you know how to find the, uh, uh, or, uh, right now you know it because using the uh, square root of negative numbers to represent a solution. I am trying to tell you something uh, much, much before complex number system was introduced. That is a thing. And these are two people, actually Tartaglia solved, gave us some solution for special form and then Cardano generalized it for general system. You can do one observation. So, you, whatever I am telling you here, you do this exercise. If I make a change of variable, change of variable, t is equal to x minus a by 3, then equation 1, this is equation 1, 1 red, uh, goes to Another equation to t cube plus p t uh, p t plus q is equal to zero. This I call equation two. Do you see an observation difference? The difference. So if you make a change of with some p and q, I don't want to explain. You find it out. Some p and q in terms of a b c. You can calculate that. So, I will leave it as an exercise for you. You make this change of variable, substitute x equal to t plus a by 3 here, then you can see that it goes to something, the important observation, no second degree term, no second degree term. That is the observation, okay. And then he has uh, proposed something interesting. That is what let me tell you that. Okay. All right. So, let me do that. So, what is the method? So, let me describe the method. Uh, where do I describe the method? Uh, maybe here itself. I will do the method here itself. This is the Cardano's method. So, you want to find a root, 
root means find t satisfying this equation. That is called a solution of this equation or it is also called the root of the equation. So, look for a root. So, let me complete from here. Look for a root, root p of the form of the form of the form t equal to u plus v. I am going to find the real numbers u and v which I am going to do it such that u plus v is a root of this equation. So, I want to see that one p equal to u plus v from here. How, now, substitute it. How do you get that, that cube? So, what is t cube? So, u plus q p it, since it is a root since t is a root what it will give you u plus v whole cube plus uh, p into u plus v plus q is equal to 0. Now, what do you do? I expand it. When I expand it, what do I get it? I get a u cube term. I also get a 3 u square v term. Then I get 3 u v square term. Then I will get a v cube term. So, I combine first I will take a v cube term then I will have 3 u square v plus 3 u v square in which 3 u v is common. So, I will write that 3 u v you have common and in the bracket I will get a u plus v that is what you will get it and here also there is a u v please do this algebra I get this ok into 3 u v plus p into u plus v plus q is equal to 0. This is not a difficult, it is a uh, high school thing. You just expand it, collect all the terms together, put it in this form. u and v are my choice. I can vary u and v. I do not have a choice for t. I have to find a t. So, where I can choose u and v in such a way that I can choose many ways. I can write the same number in different sum. If I have 10, I can write it 5 plus uh, 5. I can write 4 plus 6. So, I do not know which combination will work, but I have choice. I can choose anything as long as t is a root. So, I choose u v such that 3 u v plus p equal to 0. Once I choose this, this term is vanished. Immediately, I will get u cube plus v cube is equal to minus q. So, you see this term vanished I get it in. From here I will get u v is equal to minus p cube by thing. Cube, uh, take a cube of it I get u cube v cube is equal to u v is equal to minus p by 3 cubit then I will get u cube v cube that will be minus p cube by 27. So, you have I have two equations now this. Still, I am in cubic. Why do I want to uh, do it something better? Because I want uh, something which is reachable, which is doable. Because cubic equation, I do not know. I want to reduce to something which I know it. So, you put alpha equal to u cube and beta equal to v cube. What do I get it? alpha plus beta is equal to minus q and alpha beta is equal to minus p q by 27. Keep that mind q is known, this is known. So, you may be observing something interesting those who are done because all of you are done probably this one. If alpha and beta this is a, a roots of some quadratic equation, then this is the sum of the roots, this is the product of the roots. So, if you know the sum of the roots and the product of the roots, you can write a quadratic equation for which alpha and beta are the roots. Therefore, this is the observation which you know in plus 2, sum and product. Therefore, alpha, beta are the roots of the equation roots of the equation which 
y square plus beta will come so it will be plus qy and here it's a product will come minus pq by 27 equal to 0. See this qb is a given quantity but this is a quadratic equation. So you see quadratic equation. Wonderful. Since it is a quadratic equation, I can write down its uh, roots. So, I immediately I can write down, once you know the quadratic equation, I have the formula by squaring thing. So, you have a concept of squaring. The moment you have a quadratic equation, you have a uh, way of writing. So, I can write alpha beta is equal to here minus q uh, half of uh, plus or minus square root of q square minus 4 ac formula you use it that will become plus 4 p cube by 27 by half so you have half of it this is the roots is that okay it's fine so you have uh, found alpha and beta but what is alpha and beta alpha is u cube beta is v cube so you have two roots minus q plus or minus square root of this one and do that. Now our issue comes. If this is positive, if q square plus 4 p cube by 27 is positive, then no problem implies solution of cubic solution. How do you get the cubic solution? If this is positive, find the square root and then uh, find the, so that you can determine alpha and beta. Once you know alpha and beta, alpha is equal to u cube, you can solve for u because you take the cubic root and then you take the cubic root of v and then you can take, you can determine u, you can determine v and hence you can determine u plus v and hence you can get the root. So when you have this condition, you have a cubic equation is solved because it gives you a root for the cubic equation. Once you get one root, you know polynomial can be factor and then you can find the remaining roots. So, you have problem is that. So, the issue comes when you is negative. So, what happens? What happens when q square plus for p cube minus 27 is negative. What is the trouble? When this is a negative number, this will become negative and you have the problem of finding square roots of negative number. So, that is the first time they uh, have, not first time, at least a one occasion where you want to solve a precise problem, occurrence of the square root of negative number. This would have occurred many times, but what I want to do is that I am going to solve a problem by assuming that I know it. That is what I am going to do now. I uh, construct an example, very precise example. Okay. So, I will do a very precise example. Of let me do the example here. So, example, I will not do all the calculation, please go back and do the calculation. You have t is q minus 15 t minus 4 equal to 0. Okay. And uh, this problem you can easily solve it, but I am uh, trying to solve it in another way, motivating the occurrence of the uh, uh, roots of negative number. You can see that t equal to 4 is a root. t equal to 4 is a root because this is 4 cube 64, 60 minus 64 equal to 0. Once you get one root, factorize it, you can get another root 2 plus square root of minus 121 and one more root is there. Let me look at my calculation and 2 minus minus, minus uh, not 121, 
So let me correct it. That the, what are the roots there? That's not the roots. Minus 2 plus root 3. These are not the roots. You can do is that. Minus 2 plus root 3 and minus 2 minus root 3. Minus 2 plus root 3. Minus 2 minus root 3. All are real. These are all real numbers. This is not a complex number. Or all real numbers. Of course, a, uh, this fact probably you may know it. If you do not know, please read it. Every cubic equation, every cubic equation has at least one real root. Equation has at least one real root. Cubic equation, but or oh, even degree equations may not have a real root just like x square plus 1 equal to 0. That is the problem. When you have an even degree equation, the even degree equation may not have a root. But cubic equation can get one real root, but then other two roots may be real, may not be real. But for this particular equation, all the three roots are real. So you want to have a degree. So this is the method. So let us try to, so you have got this problem is easily solved because you could check one root easily. Because once you get one root, you get it. But if you have a general cubic equation, it may be very difficult to get one root. Once you get one root, you get the other two roots using quadratic equation. So this is lucky to get it. But I want to apply because uh, I know the roots, I want to apply Cardano's method. So I will not give you the detail. Apply Cardano method. You can apply. What is in the Cardano's method? This is of the form. Uh, that is, uh, uh, it is in the previous page. Here you have your p equal to minus 15 and q is equal to minus 4. So you do all the computations. So let me tell you, I, I do not do anything. You first compute this, check, verify these facts, verify q square plus 4p cube by 27, for, for by 27 is negative. So at this stage, the Cardano method fails. Cardano method method fails. But I want you to tell you something very interesting at this stage. So let me erase everything. So what I am going to do is that if I apply Cardano's method, I will get some u cube and v cube. If I apply Cardano's method, what I will get is that you get u cube is equal to, so let me note down the data here properly. 2 plus square root of minus 121 and v cube is uh, 2 minus square root of minus 121. This is what I get it. So you have this problem of negative numbers coming. Now it is my take. I assume that I have a new system in which my square roots of complex numbers are defined and also an algebra is defined exactly as in the real number system. So this necessitates, forces us to have a system in which a square roots of negative numbers are defined as well as an algebra of addition and multiplications are defined. Once you do that, I treat this Right now, I do not know at that stage in the 14th, 15th, 16th century, they do not know that. But assuming that I know this, I can construct a just proceed as it is. I will take u is equal to cube root of exactly, I do not mind what it is, plus square root of minus 121. And I take v equal to, these are all I am doing without, uh, with the assumption that I know this. Keep that in mind now. I do not know it, but
But I, uh, I pretend that I know it. I also pretend that I can do all my algebra with that kind of numbers. So I pretend that I know this one, then I can take cube root because I think and v is equal to minus uh, 2 minus uh, square root of minus 121. And then what is my t? t I get it, cube root of 2 plus square root of minus 121 minus, I take 1 minus outside cube. So yeah, that is for the convenience, it is not compulsory, but uh, you can do that. Because I want to read the unknown guy in a similar fashion. You see, this is it. This is interesting. This guy I do not know because its object is not there at that time. Hence, I do not know exactly this one. But then, this guy also I do not know. I am assuming I can do it. I am taking this, I am doing a subtraction. So, you just pretend I know everything at that stage. You can verify this is an exercise which you can do it. Even now I do it, assuming that square root is defined just symbolically, you can show that T satisfies the cubic equation. Satisfies T cube minus 15 T minus 4 equal to 0. Something bit unnatural, right? You have one unknown guy, you have another unknown guy, both have some bad uh, terms which I do not know, but I, when I subtract it, I am satisfying a cubic equation. And I already know that my cubic equation has real root. So, even though these two guys are involved certain things which is a not known quantities, but when I subtract it, that unknown quantities somehow get a thing. And when you, after studying this course or a complex analysis course, actually you can prove that this is actually is a real number. Okay, right now it does not look like a real number. So, you can prove later, prove later, not now. I will give you an intuition, prove later t is a real number. Okay. So, it will be a good exercise after my third class or something to show that this is a real number. So, what this shows is that the whole analysis shows is that if I have a system which are bigger than a, my real number system incorporating my square roots of negative numbers if there is a way and I can develop an algebra to that system then I will be able to solve problems which may be difficult even though this is simple the difficult problem could be solved. Okay. So, as I said, we will not pursue about the Cardano's method further, but uh, as I said, it would be interesting for the students to read some additional materials here and there. Okay. So, I want you to tell you one more interesting case. You can still using your <laughs> negative number system, if it is there, you can actually solve actual problems, which of course you engineers, as engineers, you will be seeing it. Now, like, let us look at an interesting parabola. Consider this equation, x square plus 3x minus 10. Okay, this is the equation. This is a parabolic equation. Okay. How do you solve, how does this uh, parabola looks like? You solve this equation, right? put y equal to 0 put y equal to 0, solve, what do you get it? You get, when uh, solve, you get x equal to minus y and 2, okay, are the roots, are the roots. So, if I plot it here, I have minus 5 here and 2 here and this go parabola may, because this is a positive sign, so it will go to infinity, so the parabola may look like. Parabola is symmetric. Every parabola has an axis. This is called the axis of symmetry. Axis of symmetry. Okay. So, you have a nice uh, axis of symmetry. How do you get my axis of symmetry? This is my x axis. 
my y axis. So, what would be this one? This will be x equal to minus 3 by 2. Okay. So, my axis uh, y axis will be here 0 which is equal to minus 3 by 2. So, I can have the my how do I uh, determine my axis of symmetry? You look at the roots and take the average or midpoint average or midpoint. How do I get the average? You take 5 plus 2 by 3 that is equal to minus 3 by 2 that would be your axis. So, whenever you want to do that one you have real roots. Now, I want to consider a slightly a modified parabola. What is your modified parabola? x square plus 3x plus 10. What is the difference between this parabola and this parabola? The difference is only in the constant term. And one, one parabola is differ only by its constant term, it will just shift. So, my new parabola, if uh, you can see where this x is equal to 0, this will be at my, uh, minus 10. Okay? When x equal to 0, y is minus 10. So, when x equal to 0, this will be at 10 and it is shifted by 20. So, this is my, this is equal to this parabola, this is this parabola. So, this parabola will be somewhere here. Okay. So, it will not intersect the x axis. What does that mean? When a parabola does not intersect the x axis, it means it has no real roots that you can actually solve it. So, solve it y equal to 0. This immediately implies this equation, this parabola, this is the parabola. This parabola does not intersect the x axis and hence this parabola has no roots. So, okay, this equation has no real roots. So, let us find the my, uh, complex roots x equal to minus 3 plus or minus 4ac 3 square 9 minus 40. So, it will be minus 31. So, you see for this parabola naturally it will not be a real root because it does not intersect this one. So, of course, this is a very simple example. Since I know this axis of symmetry, I already know the axis of symmetry. What I am telling is that again by assuming this one, so I have two roots minus 3 plus root minus 31 by 2 and I have minus 3 minus root minus 31 by 2. Exactly as I have done, now I am a pretender. Because I am, I don't know what it is. So, I pretend that I know it. I pretend that I know the algebra. So, I pretend everything that I have the negative numbers. I do the same process. I average the roots. Average it. When I average, I am pretending everything. I am uh, just summing it, though I don't know them. I am summing it, uh, but since this is plus, this is minus this will get cancelled. That my bad things which I do not know will fight each other and leave. And it goes and I exactly getting again minus 3 by 2. You see? That means I could still get my axis of symmetry even though it does not have real roots. And I can do that. This is a, a simple nice direct application. And this is much more general. You can take any quadratic parabolic equation, equation and you can get the uh, you can get the uh, roots by doing the simple algebra. So, what I want to tell you in this one and a half or all, almost two lectures, you have a sufficient uh, contributions, you have su sufficient motivation to introduce a new number system. Uh, we have some new number system. And then if you develop an algebra in the number system, you can solve problems, which of course in your engineering and other or undergraduate or science graduates, when you do a further study in science or engineering or physics, you will see the use of complex analysis in a large way. Quite often the complex analysis, the way of solving complex analysis uh, helps you to solve problem, not only understand problem and you can solve uh, problems much more uh, easy way or much more beautiful manner. 
with this uh, good contribution which uh, with the enough motivation of the number system you have now matured enough so before coming to the next lecture i would request you to go through uh, some of the things some of the algebra which you have studied uh, complex number system so that you will be able to oh, understand my lectures faster way and i also want to remind the young kids that there is no easy way to learn mathematics you can learn mathematics only by hard work and doing problems spending time on it thinking about it and working out the exercises whatever be the way we give lectures end of it you have to sit do the problem work out the exercises prepare for the second lecture okay otherwise it will be a somewhat waste of time so i will end this lecture by just introducing so i will begin from there by tomorrow or next in your next class so i want to introduce the complex numbers introduce complex numbers complex numbers and i will do more on that little more faster till i come back to the still we are in complex numbers we have not come to the complex functions so how do i want to introduce a symbol again i am starting with a symbol only place i couldn't do a symbol is in the real number system please recall that one i could do n i could do z i could q, do q from q to r is very delicate very hard from r to c i can uh, once you understand r i can still introduce a symbol z equal to a plus ib okay don't ask me for any meaning as such this has no meaning this is just a symbol what i am in a symbol i where a and b are real numbers a b are real numbers okay one thing i want uh, to tell you if any uh, in engineering literature instead of i j is used instead of i the notation j is used so if you are uh, an engineer is reading these lectures replace i by j because engineers usually use i for the current okay but for the science students or mathematics students i is a normal symbol so corresponding to each a in b in r a unique number that's more important unique i don't call it right now a number i call it an object or a symbol okay that's what i call it this is for me is just like a picture is an object or symbol right now this has no meaning this separately has no meaning okay this is collectively this is some symbol corresponding to it and i call c the set of all such numbers a plus ib with a is in a comma b in r there is nothing special about this i you need not have to use a plus ib some books use it this way some other big instead of arranging this picture i can symbolically represent as a pair that's also possible so you don't have to even introduce this symbol i you don't have to introduce this one but this is quite commonly used so i am using it but many some books they use this definition this way it is immaterial that is what you so when you read two different books some books may use this notation and do all the analysis some other book may use this notation and do all the analysis so don't get worried about it because as such there is nothing new because this is a collection of objects that's all as you have seen in the last two, two lectures just a collection of objects has no meaning the meaning and its sanctity is coming only when you introduce something in algebra so my next aim is to introduce algebra algebra of 
addition, multiplication, subtraction, division. I want to introduce on this collection a collection of addition, multiplication thing in such a way that this R is also contained in C. I don't, I want something new. I don't, I want to retain the R, development of R. I don't want to skip R now. So that's easy. I will do that tomorrow uh, in the next class when, whenever it is. But I want to see this one. And this algebra should be a generalization from here. I should get back my addition, multiplication, division, everything. So I don't want something new to be here. It should be new, but should also retain every property which I am having it here. So I will tell you one more thing. The last thing in this uh, to say something. Just like real line, just like real line is a visualization of, uh, real line is a visualization. So you have a R which is a visualization of R, the C can be visualized in a plane. That's the advantage of this one. In other words, for every A and B, I will have a unique point AB. So corresponding to every Z equal to A plus IB or A minus IB, I will have a unique point. In every point here, there is a unique object here. So there is a one-to-one -one correspondence between the number C and between the uh, points in this plane. But I want you to one thing very well distinguish which generally students make a mistake. There is an another notation R2 where there also you have the same thing. So whenever you are visualizing a plane to visualize something both are visualized completely differently. So this visualization is a visualization of R2. In that R2 there is no concept of product. In this there is a concept which a product concept is there. So this is called a complex plane. And R2 is called a real plane. Both are different. The distinction is in its algebra. See, when I say a complex plane, the points are identified with the C. In C, you have a product structure, addition structure. In modern terminology, we call it a field. On the other hand, on R2, there is no product structure. It is a, just a group with respect to the addition with a scalar multiplication. And in modern terminology, if you know it or not, or you may learn it later, in the modern terminology, we call it a vector space. So you have to have a distinction between the complex plane and a real plane. And uh, I think I'll stop for this lecture. And we will continue from here. And we will develop the proper algebra. And then we will go on to define the function analysis of complex functions. Okay.